Whoa, whoa! This is Woku called the Fool, man. I just jumped off the porch with dirty good old bastard. Trying to get some nick, I'm really trying to get a chick. I thought the Honda with the Wanda, then I hopped inside the fish. Alright, so we got Cusco the Fool off the porch with us today, man. How you feeling, bro? Man, what's good, man? I'm feeling good. What about you? I'm doing great, man. Yeah. I appreciate you coming by, man. Go ahead and introduce who you got sitting on the porch with you today, too. Oh, man, this is my little cousin, slash little brother. You know what I'm saying? Been with me forever. Since he's been little, since I've been little. This is my homeboy slash right hand man slash DJ slash all the above. You know what <laughs> Just slash, huh? Yeah, man. You, it all. you get slashed about that, man. That's the one. Okay, cool. Well, now that's what's up, man. All right, so uh, originally from Manning, South Carolina? Fair. Okay. So I, I ain't never heard of Manning, in South Carolina, man. <laughs> What can you tell us about man and what goes on out there? Man, that shit's small. Like, I was raised in Columbia, South Carolina, but born in Minnesota, South Carolina, and that shit's smaller than Columbia, and Columbia is small as fuck. <laughs> well, man, and like, out down there, we got no mall down there. Really? What we got, like, Walmart, Walmart is the most biggest thing? Yeah. And then you got little shoe stores in that plaza and all that, but other than that, you gotta go like the Sump or Columbia the shop or go to the beach or some shit like that. Okay, I got yeah. you. So, right. you said you grew up in Columbia. What was your childhood like growing up there then? That shit was lit. Yeah. A lot of ass cuttings, um, a lot of street shit, a lot of trouble, a lot of lessons though. Yeah. A whole lot of lessons. Um, A lot of a lot of guns in the wrong people's hands, <laughs> but that shit that shit was lit though, man. It still is lit because I'm still growing, so I wouldn't say childhood, but I'm still growing, so okay. it's lit. Yeah. At what age would you say you jumped off the porch then? I ain't gonna cap man, like that four, five, six years or not. Hell nah, man. It been had to be like a good. I've been a badass. But as in jumping off the porch, what that shit mean to me or what it mean to niggas I know shit. I had to been like, I say about 13, 14. Yeah, okay. yeah. When I actually started goddamn making my own grown man decisions. I'm standing on it if I get it, no matter the consequences, yeah. yeah. 13, 14. Okay. Did you have much guidance out there at the time, or was it like you said, kind of like learning as you go? Nah, I mean, it was learning as I go. Because mom, mom and them, you know what I'm saying, they ain't, raising you in, they ain't raising you to do that shit, you feel what I'm saying, or certain shit that you get into or do. They ain't raising you to do that, you know what I'm saying? Ain't like they telling you to go out here and hit a leak or go out here and get into some trouble. Ain't nobody, I don't know nobody. I don't know none of my daughter's mama's telling them that, so. But, nah, it was definitely a uh, self lessons learned. Yeah. So, what would you say was one of the biggest life lessons you had to learn so far in your life? Shit. Homeboys, man. Yeah, homeboys. They ain't really got too many of them. I mean, you got a lot of them, but you ain't got too many real, real homeboys, you know what I'm saying? You got niggas calling each other brothers and niggas calling each other this and that, and then they don't last like it was supposed to. Yeah, but. A big lesson was relationships. I say homeboys and females. Oh, yeah. You gotta know how to handle people, know how to rock with people, know how to move with people, know how to respect people and respect yourself. Yeah, yeah, so relationships. Yeah. And managing money. That's a big one too. Fact. You'll be out here splurging and be like, God damn. Hey, it be looking good as hell. 
You be looking good as hell. <laughs> but you don't be feeling too good. <laughs> For real, them pockets ain't straight. No cap. No, that's real. Yeah. All right, so how long have you been living in Atlanta and what brought you out here? Oh, I've been living in Atlanta for like about a month now. A month and a half. Okay, just a month. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got friends. I said my little friend right here, he's been staying down here for a minute. For what, about two, three years? Yeah, they've been staying down here for two, three years. I recently, myself, moved up here for about a month. Okay. But I've been in and out, been in and out of Atlanta, though. Traveling in and out of here, coming to Fort Ryan. How does it compare to Columbia? Big change of pace, huh? Way big change of pace. Way better than fast. Way better, man. That shit way better. The access to what you need way better. Like everything better. It's faster too though, so you you can get caught up in the wrong shit. But there's definitely more opportunity. Way better opportunity at this moment. Absolutely, yeah. Right. Yeah. So how long you been rapping? When'd you first start? I don't know for a long time, man. I've been rapping. To myself, like, I say fifth, sixth grade, some shit like that. Okay. But as in putting it out, I started letting people actually hear my music. When I got to high school, I was like ninth grade, me and my clique started listening to it, people I'm hanging with. Then that shit started spreading out throughout that way. Okay. But actually taking them off pretty serious, I said, what, Monkey Suit was like, what, four years? Three, four years ago? Three, four years ago. Uh, yeah. So what that motivated you to start taking it serious about four years ago then? Shit. It been really, music sometimes be the only thing you can depend on sometimes, you feel me? Like, that shit get, even the motherfuckers that you have to depend on don't be there. But you always cut on some shit. And it feels like all that go away, you know what I'm saying? You can always cut on some music and then all that go away. Or you can always listen to some music and relate to it. I feel like they going through what you going through, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was just always into music though, man, from making beats. I used to watch my older cousins don't make beats and sit on Fruity Loops. So I try to, whenever I'm tired of waiting on somebody to make the perfect beat or make the right beat for me, I'm dipping and dabbing, trying to make beats too. Okay. Most of the tracks you hear from me, be on my beats. Oh, for real? Yeah, okay. no cap. Yeah. So who'd you grow up listening to? Who were some of your favorites? Lil Gutter. He's now Gutter with the sack. You feel what I'm saying? I'm a motherfucking big brother. DJ Matt Duffy. Um, industry artists, UGK, Devin the Dude, uh, Dirty Boys. Okay, shout out um, to Dirty Boys, oh, yeah, they slept man. on. Yeah, the pimping the gangster, man. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, shout out to them. Um, three Seats, they had a little box. They always have a little box on them. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really too big on the R&B, but Donny Hathaway. Um, um, what was the white boy named John B? Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was, he was gangster too. He made that song with Tupac, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was hard. Okay. So how'd you get your rap name? My rap name came from my nickname, which has been my nickname for a long ass time, Cusco. That shit came from this uh, goof-ass cartoon. The food came from the street shit, the bullshit, and all that. You know what I'm saying? Everything that come with that. Put both of them together, and that's what you got. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, yeah. So how long did it take for you to develop, like, your own sound with your music? I've, I've really been having my own sound. I was told that forever. Since I ever hopped on the mic, since I ever tried anything with music, I always stood out with it. I ain't had no problem standing out with it. Yeah. I ain't had no problem with adjusting either. But 
you gonna definitely tell the difference when you hear me on something or when I do some shit. It's definitely gonna be my shit, my type shit, yeah. And we're gonna vibe to it. Bet, yeah. How would you describe your sound or your style of music that you make? Real, a rhythm. Um, none of that uh, sprinkly, sprinkly shit. <laughs> what you mean by that? <laughs> Ain't none of that sprinkly, sprinkly shit. Like the closest thing you're gonna get to uh, some soft shit is me telling a female to get her shit together on a slow ass beat, you feel me? <laughs> Other than that, yeah, it's straight raw, man. Okay. Yeah, for real. I got you. What's your thoughts on the music industry and everything that's going on right now? It's really going up from the looks of it. From the outside looking in, or I don't know if I'm in or not yet, but it, that shit is the way. It's, it's well, it's a super way. It's not the only way, but it's a way. Yeah, yeah. And you got people in there with that really got talent. And you got motherfuckers in there that really got money. You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah, be on the lookout for that. But yeah, it's definitely the way. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. What would you say was the biggest risk you took for your career that paid off? <laughs> um, you said the biggest risk? The tape? that you took? Kids every day. Seeing my kids every day. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you got something that you already know, that's a damn, that's some shit you wanna be around every day, all day. I mean, shit. Kids and family. Other than that, shit. Ain't no risk big enough. We don't, ain't no risk. The bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. Mm -hmm. What has being a father taught you about life? I, I gotta start respecting a little bit more shit and people or how they look at stuff, how respect the, another man on how he look at something. Slow me down. Mm -hmm. I feel that, man. So Fuck what's the music up. scene like in Columbia and how does it compare to out here in Atlanta? He was working together out here. But at the same time, he just got, res like, it's respect. It's respect. Niggas ain't too much got that down there. Like, niggas ain't working together down there at all. You might you might link up with another rapper and drop three, four songs. Shit, you might not never hear them shits. That happened to me numerous of times. Really? Yeah, yeah. But, shit, we ain't tripping. But it's definitely, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely, the working together is definitely a big problem that's not going on down there. Yeah, I got you. All right, uh, what can you tell us about the single that you had, Another Lick, that dropped a couple years ago? This one went up, man. What? Yeah, what can you tell us? Oh, man, that's the shit. <laughs> Word. I ain't gonna lie, um, recording it. It was a situation, you know what I'm saying? But recording it, it was just like regular time going in the studio, recording some shit that's going on, recording some shit that happened, or recording, you know. But after, after dropping the track and shooting the video for it, and actually putting it out there, that shit just went up. It went up faster than a lot of my old shit. I mean, it went up rapidly, man. And that shit went up fast. I got 
white people, all kind of motherfuckers listening to that shit. But I'm fucking with it. I'm loving that <laughs> shit. <laughs> like they make me love the song even more. Okay. You know, we get we make songs every day, or if they make songs, I, as my own man or own artist, make songs every day or every other day. You get tired of listening to the same song over and over again. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fans make you listen to that motherfucker. Facts. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, right. They'll pump it up for you. Word. All right, what can you tell us about your new single, Booking Policy? Oh, yeah. I ain't popping out to no party and there's some woes with me. When you come into your front center, there's some holes in it. Tell them pussies don't even book me if I can't bring my poles in me. Scrape the fuck up. Booking Policy, it is what it is. <laughs> Straight up. You can ask me that, you can ask my manager that. that. <laughs> That's how it's going down. Okay. But nah, it, um, just another club song, man, another club anthem. I'm we'll turning the streets up too, as well. But keep another, keep a, keep the vibe going, you know what I'm saying? Keep the turn lit vibe going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We love the club, we love the streets. That's where the music is going at. That's where it's happening. Yeah. Uh, what can you tell us about the project Underrated you dropped a couple months ago? I don't know. Underrated, that's a, um, that's a real dope project I was working on. I just feel like shit, I wasn't getting a lot of recognition, period. Um, you know what I'm saying? But I'm pretty sure a lot of people feel like that when they work, you know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to label that um, album that. Well, I think it's like 10 or 11. Something like that songs on it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Some good, some good music to ride and listen to. Same type of vibe, same type of struggle, same type of story. But you definitely see in the level up, the progress in all my music. Yeah. You about to drop the deluxe version, right? Yeah, facts. Yeah, yeah, call the answer. Okay. Word, I'm gonna do it like that. Um, Blue Chip Entertainment. Yeah, yeah. World Game Presents. The answer, yeah, yeah, that shit about to be stupid. How many new songs you plan to put on the on the deluxe? I was gonna do, I was gonna do, um, I was gonna do twelve. I'm thinking fifteen. Okay. Just shoot the ass a video for him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get the ass a visual work right done. Give him a, give him a, they give him a good variety of songs to listen to. And I asked the shit to watch while they, you know what I'm saying, beating that shit. Yeah. Hey, I'm thinking 15. Okay. What's the next video or single you plan to drop off of there? I just dropped something called Upside Down. It's in the process of getting mixed and shit. Okay. Yeah. So once um, my boy KC get through with that, we're going to drop that. It's going to be on all music platforms. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any features going to be on the project? Mm. Gutter with the sack. Gutter with the sack. Gutter with the sack. Um. Uh, gutter with the sack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Scrape uh, like that. Fast. And what about producers? Who'd you cook up with for this? Oh, one? nah. I got a couple of them, though. Um, Rizzy on the beat. Uh, Nico, that um, link up with Jackson, you know, mm-hmm. Nico, yeah, baby. Nico, baby. Uh, me, myself, um, what's the fuck? Lit Boy, this shit legendary, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good four, five of them. Okay. Yeah. So I, I normally mostly make majority of them, so, yeah. I got That's you. how it's going to be. And you got a tour coming up too, right? The underrated tour? Oh, yeah, definitely. We're in the process of it too. Okay. Like we're in the, really in the mix of it. Yeah, yeah. I got, matter of fact, I got Dirty Glove on one of them dates. Let's get it, man. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. Fact. All right, so your label's Whoa, right? Words of encouragement? Yeah, all right. So how'd you come up with that? 
Man, I just wanted my music to be my story, my struggles, but something that you can cut on and it help you get through whatever fuck you getting through or whatever you need to get through, you know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't rich, everybody ain't broke, everybody ain't, you know what I'm saying? But whatever the situation is, you can cut on one of the Cusco songs and goddamn, yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Vibe out, sad, happy, mad, whatever the fuck case may be. I feel that. Words of encouragement, man. Yeah. Yeah, and talk about the grind that comes with being an indie artist, too, man, having to get it out the mud. Man, that's it. Merch, 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 man. Get your merch, man. Get a lot of merch, man. But you got to get in the streets and fuck with these people hand in hand. Like, the internet shit, that shit cool, but that shit ain't what it is to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a way to go. But I like to goddamn rub, bump shoulders with you, you know what I'm saying? Actually, I just see you, meet you. You know what I'm saying? I know, if you never see me again, then you never see me again. You know what, you know what that is, you feel me? But, yeah, we definitely need to bump hands, bump shoulders with people, get out there, get in the mix, actually do footwork. Oh, yeah. Damn right. It's easier to feel someone when you meet them in person than yeah, damn right. online. Damn right. They love everybody on the internet. Cause everybody <laughs> trying to be like everybody on the internet. And you meet them, then you're like, I don't like this nigga, this nigga got Man, he boozy. No, he been boozy on the internet. He been kicking that same face shit on the internet. Now you meet him, you don't fuck with him. Shit, you see me, hey, I'm gonna call you a bitch on the internet, I'm gonna call you a bitch <laughs> when I see you. <laughs> Straight up. If I show you love on the internet, I'm gonna show you love when I see you. Word. But. Would you be interested in signing with another label? I mean, the process is to make it out, hell yeah. If it's life changing, if it's, if it's not just my life changing, my family life changing, yeah, yeah, we gonna do that. We gonna do that. Not me gonna do that, we gonna do that. We all gonna do that, yeah, yeah. But other than that shit, we're gonna keep getting this footwork in until we get the way we going. Yeah. Or get the way we trying to go. Absolutely, yeah. But. What else you working on, Cusco? What else coming up for you, man? Um. I'm trying to get into this car shit, man. My little cousin got this car shit going on, man. They be driving these fast ass cars and shit. Oh, yeah? Yeah, uh, yeah, so I just got me a little Audi. I got it wrapped and shit. About to put some turbos and shit up in there, trying to get in that type okay. shit. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just trying to stick my foot in the different shit. Yeah. Yeah, I got my kids growing up. My um, oldest, he five. My youngest, two. Zaya, Zaya, love y'all boys. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get them into some more sports and basketball shit, so that's what I'm on. It's either the music or what I got going on or what they got going on. But anything else, fuck. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Any shout outs you want to give before we wrap it up? Oh, yeah, man. Shout out to Leesburg, Eastover, the whole country, um, the whole Met, man, Columbia. 5DZ, Gutter with the Sack, DZ McDuffie, Free Skeet, nigga. Um, my boy DJ talk to me, make sure y'all go look him up at him. Shout out to my manager, Sean Blue Chip Entertainment. Y'all know what the fuck going on. Everybody mixing that, they family too, WGF. Shout out to G-Way Ray and his whole car section, man. That's how we rockin', man, we up in here. We about to make room and take room. Wall gang on bank. Trying to get some nick. I'm really trying to get a chick. I thought the Honda with the Wanda, then I hopped inside the fish. Smaller homies, little Tommy, 